this is Kat of SpookyMoon.com and this is my Jack-O-Lantern Tree Artist Trading Card and for our inaugural, inaugural video I never can say that right the first time I thought I would walk you through the process of making this. The first thing we're going to do to create the background is use something called the wrinkle-free technique and use it with distress stains and a non-stick craft sheet, which is necessary to the technique. I'm going to be using three stains, spiced marmalade, scattered straw, and aged mahogany. And what you do with these is squish them right on the sheet. My main color is the spiced marmalade. I'm going to be using the most of that. I'm going to be using quite a bit of the scattered straw as well, and I'm not mixing these first two colors. I'm putting them on separately. And the last color that I want an accent of, the aged mahogany, I will run down, right down the middle there. I'm going to spritz this with some water to get a little more moisture in there. And here I have a plain white cardstock card cut to two and a half by three and a half, artist trading card size. And I'm going to just put this right into the color. And see what a beautiful background that gives us. Put that aside for just a second. I don't want to waste this color. I'm going to just smoosh in one more card here. Just because I like to have cards aside with a background already on them. I clean this up with a paper towel when I'm doing a lot of this. This paper towel becomes very beautiful in the end and I save it for collage work. And now I'm going to bring in a piece of uh, plastic that I use to dry things on because this next step we don't want to move the card too much. I'm going to put the card on my drying sheet and get it really really wet with the mister. And then I'm going to do something called salting. I'm going to put little piles of salt and it will lift the color and give me wonderful bursts once this is completely dry. I'm using pure ocean salt for no other reason than that it is the right size. And I'm going to lift this carefully and take it off to dry overnight. Here we have one that's already done. And you can see the bursts of color in there from the salting technique. And now I'm going to take this and stamp it with a hand carved stamp. That's my Jack o' Lantern tree stamp. I want to stamp it with Color Box Chestnut. It's a very nice brown, and the Color Box is a pigment ink that's good for embossing, which is what we're going to do with this. Now, even though I'm going to give this a nice firm stamp, there are some solid areas that are going to probably show up textured because I've added so much texture to the paper. And that's fine. I actually like this look. I think it makes it look a bit spookier. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to put my embossing powder on. I store it in this plastic bin with a spoon because the extra fine embossing powder, the clear stuff, is the stuff I use the most. Okay, let's hit this with a heat gun. There's our embossed stamp. I want to come in and color it. Now the embossing solved a problem for me because the colors I wanted to use were in two completely different pen series. I wanted to use this orange from Copic and this orange from Spiced Marmalade. And the Copic does not work well with solvent inks, and I like to use stays on ink a lot, so that wasn't going to work. And the Distress Marker will smear over water based inks. So I had to do something so I could use them both, and embossing solved the problem. First, I'm going to give these little pumpkin faces a coloring with the Copic, and it is YR04 orange or chrome orange. Next, I'm going to come in with the fine tip on my spiced marmalade distress marker, 
and give them a little shading around the side here. The last thing I'm going to do with the front is go over the edges with my ink pad of Colorbox Chestnut. Not trying to get it even, just add some grungy definition there. Now on the back of my cards, I usually cover the whole thing and put a label on it. But this one looks so nice with the color seeping through. I decided I didn't want to cover it. I wanted something that was loose uh, handwriting style, so I carved another stamp in my own handwriting. I'm going to ink that up. And it just has the name of the card and the month I made it, and a little pumpkin on the bottom there. And right below that, my signature stamp goes on. My signature is Fry Kitty. And there you have it. Jack-o'-lantern tree, artist trading card.